Stranded 2, Trial by Fire, Chapter Number 4 Buzz knelt in the dirt feeling ready to collapse, or scream, or both. In front of him, he had a piece of bamboo, split in half like a long, thin bowl. At one end was a ball of coconut husk. In his hand, he held a stick that he had sharpened with Uncle Dexter's bowie knife. For the last hour, or however long it had been, he had run the stick back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, over the bamboo trying to work up enough heat to get the husk to burn. So far, all he had gotten was a giant blister on his palm and at least a dozen new mosquito bites. There were other ways to make fire, he knew. They could use an eyeglasses to refract the sunlight, if any of them wore sunglasses, which they didn't. And there was a bow and arrow thing that he had seen on a show once, but the details wouldn't come back to him, no matter how hard he tried to remember. So it was down to this, friction and elbow grease. Buzz just wished that he had a little bit more of both. The idea of another long, cold night in the dark was almost too much to take. Anything? Carter asked, coming out of the woods with another armload of branches. Behind him, Jane carried a bundle of smaller twigs for kindling. They'd gathered a good amount of firewood by now, but none of it was going to do them any good if they couldn't get a flame going. Not yet, Vanessa said. Buzz sat back, scratching at the bites on his legs. It was impossible not to scratch. The mosquitoes were like their own kind of torture up here in the jungle. He'd started to wish for repellent, a repellent almost as much as food or fire. Then he left a tap. Then he felt a tap on his shoulder. Come on, Carter said. Let me give it a shot. He knew this was coming. Carter always had to put himself in the middle of everything. I've got it, Carter, he said. Do you? Carter asked and put his hand out for the stick. With Vanessa and Jane watching, there wasn't much choice. Fire was more important than anything right now, and the fact was Carter could outmuscle him at this. Still, Buzz burned just a little as he handed it over. Well, it was his idea, after all. Keep the pressure steady, he said, and keep the stick moving. If it starts to smoke, you... Yeah, yeah, I saw you... I saw what you were doing, Carter said. He knelt down and he started running the stick back and forth with more force than Buzz had been able to muster. Buzz gritted his teeth. There wasn't anything to say anyway. If they got fire out of this, great. Nothing else would matter, including who had done it. In the meantime, he just had to be patient. They all did. For a long time, Jane watched Carter work in silence. It was hard to to tear her eyes away from the stick and bamboo, even without any signs of fire. Finally, Carter sat back, dripping sweat into the dirt. He looked more than a little annoyed by now. You know, it's not like we need four people to do this, he said. He's right, Vanessa said. What we really need is water. Jane, do you think that you can get back to the falls if you take the camera for light? Jane knew the question was coming. Besides, Carter... She was the only one who knew the way, but she wasn't too excited about it. Going for water meant heading straight back into the caves. They cut like a huge spiderweb of trails through the island's cliffs and ridges. At the far end of one of those caves was a freshwater was freshwater falls, the only source of drinking water they had found so far with a real flashlight. It might take 15 minutes to get there, but the camera barely gave enough light to let them take one step at a time. It was going to be a long, slow walk through the dark. Buzz, will you come with me? Jane asked. I don't want to go alone. Well, I don't want you to either, Vanessa said. In fact, new rule, you guys. Nobody leaves camp by themselves, okay? It's too dangerous. While Buzz packed their two plastic bottles into the backpack, Jane went to get the camera. It sat on a little rock shelf at the side of the cave where Vanessa had organized all their provisions. 
It was reassuring to see the camera's little screen glow to life when she turned it on. The battery wouldn't last forever, but hopefully it would last long enough to get them to the falls and back. You ready? Buzz asked. He had the pack on now and was peering into the dark ahead of them. I guess so, Jane said. It wasn't like they had much choice. She flipped the camera to video mode and she pressed play. Then she held it out in front of her to light the way. As they started off, she could hear her own voice coming over the camera's tiny speaker. Hi everyone, this is Jane B reporting for Evanston Elementary. Today is June 25th and it's the first day of our trip. We're just a minute away from setting sail on the lucky star. It was the first video that she had made, Jane remembered. Her own introduction was followed quickly by a second voice that stopped her short, not far from the cave entrance. Buzz stopped next to her. Boin voyage, my little video artist. It was her mother. When Jane turned the camera around to see the image, there was Beth Benson. She was standing on the dock in Hawaii with Jane's new dad, Eric Diaz. Have a great time, Eric said into the lens. And here, take this for good luck. He had given her the Chicago Cubs hat right off his head. It seemed like forever ago. Now... That cap was somewhere on the bottom of the ocean, along with everything else. Go on, her mother said. You have to get on board. And sweetie, don't spend the whole time behind that camera. I don't want you to miss out. I won't, Jane heard herself say. The image on the screen jolted and blurred, or jostled and blurred. The next thing Jane saw was their parents again, as she filmed them from the back of the boat. In the background, Un Uncle Dexter was ringing a bell. Here we go, he shouted. Stand by to set sail. Have fun, her mother called. See you in a week, Eric yelled. And the two of them waved like crazy as the image slowly faded to the black. When the video was done, Jane had tears running down her cheeks. It hurt like an ache in her bones not knowing when she was going to see her mother again, not knowing when she was going to get next, get, uh, get an opportunity to hug Eric again. Vanessa and Carter were there too. She hadn't even realized that they'd come into the cave from outside. They'd all seen the video and everyone was crying, including Carter, though he tried to hide it. I miss them, Jane said. Even the words were hard to say. I just want to go home. I know, me too, Vanessa said, and put her arm around Jane. Both the boys stayed silent. But Janie, don't run the video again, okay? Use a still image for the light. It'll eat up less juice that way. Jane nodded and swallowed hard, trying not to cry anymore. She couldn't afford to be a baby here. She took a deep breath. Come on, Buzz, she said. Buzz put a hand on her shoulder, and they set off again, straight back into the darkness.